All right, welcome to another fun full topic today. We're going to be talking about ACI 211 mix design method. So this is the uh, 1991 version, ACI 211, American Concrete Institute. There is a committee called 211, and I'm actually part of it. And uh, they do lots of different documents. One of the ones they're very famous for is this ACI 211.1 document, standard practices for selecting proportions for normal, heavy, and mass concrete. So there's nine steps to this process whenever you're going to design for normal weight concrete. Uh, you're going to choose your slump. You're, in step two, you're going to talk about the find the maximum size of your aggregate. Number three, the water and air. Number four is the water cement ratio. Number five, determine the cement content. Number six, you're going to determine the coarse aggregate content. Number seven, you're going to determine the fine aggregate content. Number eight, you're going to adjust for the moistures that are in your aggregate. And then step nine, you're going to do your basic trial batching. So basic information you need to know beforehand. Typically, you want to know what slump it is. Uh, slump is in, in, is a kind of like a range that, that you use to talk about flowability of the concrete. It's not necessarily a workability measurement, but you do need that so you can kind of understand um, in this method how much water you really need to add. Uh, a next thing you need to know, figure out if it's air and train or non air and train. If you have it, if you know the percent air, that's great. Um, the compressive strength is another thing. So is it 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 PSI concrete? Uh, that's usually provided on standard documents, just like air content. Um, the next thing is, is you need those specific gravities of all your powders. So the Portland cement, if it's a type 1L cement, uh, slag, fly ash, water, you know, all the different powders that you're using, all the different cementitious materials, you need to know the specific gravities. And then you also need to know quite a bit about the aggregate information. That makes up 68% of the concrete. So you really need, you know, they ask you for a lot more information with that stuff. So the maximum coarse aggregate size, the dry rotted unit weight of the coarse aggregate, the finest modulus of the fine aggregate, and then specific gravity absorptions of, of the coarse and fine aggregate that you're using. And again, ACI 211, they really focus on just a 19, what, what I think of as a 1950s, 60s type mix design where they just have, you know, coarse aggregate, they just have fine aggregate, they're just really looking at cement. There's very little admixtures that, that they talk about other than air. So um, today is, again, we're just focusing on what the 101 ACI 211 mix design, uh, what it's all about. So the step, first step is you're going to choose a slump. ACI 211, they do have a recommended slump. And these slump ranges may, may maybe made sense. Uh, today they don't because, you know, a lot of times you're not going to be pumping concrete with a three or four inch slump. You might be using a five or six inch slump. Uh, we have water reducers and super plasticizers and uh, to kind of help. Um, so we're not just, you know, we're using water to get that workability. Um, so this table, you know, is a little outdated. So you, you need to know what slump you're going to be, you know, placing at. And so there are lots of different ranges for like, say, slip form paving. You might be paving somewhere between a zero and a two inch, a one inch slump, inch and a quarter. Super common values that work really great for slip form paving. Um, if you're going to use footings, do a floor or, 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 you know, even elevated slab, stuff like that. A lot of times um, I've seen I've seen it as low as they say for a footing, like two inches, three inches. Um, and I've seen them all the way up to eight inches. And so again, you know, a lot of times it's the preference of the contractor and in the equipment they're using that's going to determine a lot of this stuff. Um, pumped concrete, really, you don't want to pump under a four inch slump if you can help it. Um, uh, it you know, again, it does depend on what you're doing, what your concrete mix looks like, but that's just in general, uh, uh, you know, a four to eight inch slump is pretty common for, for pumped concrete. So step two, after you figure out what slump you actually want to uh, uh, be using, then you need to figure out if your coarse aggregate maximum size is going to work for what you're doing. So if you are uh, thinking about using maybe a 50, 57 stone or 67 stone um, that you'd want to go and actually check to make sure that it's at least one fifth the minimum dimension of the, of the element that you're going to be using it for. It's a third of the thickness of, of a slab. And then it's three quarters of an inch clearance between the rebar and the formwork. 
um, which is actually the last one is actually what this picture is all about. You don't want rock getting stuck uh, in between your rebar and your formwork and creating void spacing in there. So uh, once you figure out if you want to use a 57 or 67 stone, what that is, it's actually uh, based off ASTM C33. So a 67 stone has a three quarter inch nominal maximum size. A 57 stone has a one inch nominal maximum size. And then they have their gradations. So they have limits passing each of these sieves that are up here on top. Um, and, and it goes in descending order because that's what a, a sieve analysis is all about. Step number three is the water and the air content. So this table, if you first look at it, you might be confused because the top part of this table is all non-air and trained. The bottom part is if it is air and trained. So you got to figure out is my is is the concrete mix I'm designing for is it for air and trained concrete or non-air and trained? Is it going to be acceptable to freestyle uh, uh, durability? Is it going to have problems or not? And so if it's non air and trained, then you use the top part. So say we're using a one inch rock coarse aggregate, and we know we want to use a four inch slump. So that would be 325 pounds of water that we'd have. You can also get your air from this table. So if you have a one inch rock, um, they give you a, uh, an estimated what you'd want to estimate for your mix design. So one and a half inches, uh, or sorry, 1.5% air is what you'd assume for non-air and trained concrete because you're going to get some generation of air in your mix, even with no uh, uh, air and trained admixture. And so again, these, volume, these volumes down here of, of air that are assumed may not exactly be correct, okay? But uh, they just try to give you a, a, a number uh, based on some experiences that they had, okay? Um, if it's air and train concrete, it'd be the same way. Uh, you know, if it's a three-quarter inch rock and you're, you're pumping with a six-inch slump, uh, it would be, you know, uh, a 325 would be uh, what you'd be, uh, what they'd recommend using for the water content. And then you need to figure out for your air, okay? Is the air given? Is it six and a half percent air? Or do you just need to find the air content? If you need to find it, and you're again, you're using maybe a three quarter inch rock, and you know it's a severe tech case, you might be at 6.0% air. So that's how you'd find that if you wanted to, to do that. And then step number four, you need to figure out what your water cement ratio is. So uh, this is for non air and train, and this is for air and train concrete. So um, is it, you know, your compressive strength, again, I hopefully you, you, uh, know that you don't just go right off the project specs to say, if you know, the sidewalk needs 3000 PSI, you don't design right at 3000. You actually have a safety factor in there that ACI 301 talks about. So, um, instead of being at 3000 PSI, you might be at three thirty eight hundred PSI. Again, I just threw a number out there. You need to go and, and, and check out. Um, if you don't understand kind of what I'm talking about, um, you need to go and check, check out and do a little bit more work. So you don't just go straight off of what's on the drawings, uh, on the print. So there is a, you know, F prime CR is what they call it. Um, the, you know, the actual critical, uh, requirement that you design for. So if you're, you know, so if you're at 4,000 PSI is what your compressive design strengths needs to be. With that safety factor in there for non-air and train concrete, uh, they say that you can go all the way up to a 0.57 water to cement ratio. Um, so the next step is, is you talk about your cement content. Um, so the weight of the cement is going to equal the weight of the water divided by the weight of cement. So last step, we, we found that 0.57 is the example problem I gave you. And then the weight of the water um, and the example before that, so step three, I think I had like uh, uh, 325 is, is the pounds of water I think I had or something like that. Just just threw, it, threw out some numbers when we were having to read the tables. So uh, that's what you do. This is the, the bottom is step four. The top, the numerator is step three. And so uh, for the for the water weight, at least. And so that's how you'd actually calculate to figure that out. So the weight of the water. Um, divided by the water, the water to the cement ratio. And so our goal is when we're doing ACLA 211 mix designs, we're actually trying to fill a box up. 
So we're trying to get it all the way up to 27 cubic feet or one yard. So um, we, if we have our six, if we have, you know, our known air content and then our water and our cement, we can actually go back through here and calculate, you know, we could, we could take our, our weights and we can calculate them uh, based off of our volume. So if it's cement and say we wanted, we had 564 pounds of cement, we would divide that by 3.15 and we'd also divide that by 62.4 because that is your conversion from uh, uh of, of water um so from by weight to volume and so when you do that you would actually get 2.87 in the in this example and so um you would keep trying to fill your box up so we so we're going to figure out what our coarse aggregate is next and then our fine aggregate um and our fine aggregate, in essence, we treat as a filler. So that's where we're going to be heading now. So coarse aggregate step six. Um, these tables, there's one for that's a figure. There's one that's an actual table. They actually do the same thing, okay? So uh, you maybe see both of them, uh, and you're like, what in the world? Yeah, they're the same table. Or they, sorry, they, they use the same, they have this, the purpose is the same. You can either look at the table that provides lots of numbers, or you can go and graph graphically go and trace out to figure out what your bulk volume of your coarse aggregate needs to be for the mix. So again, you could literally take if it's a one inch, if it's a nominal maximum of one inch, so the inches are up on top, and this is your finalist of your sand. Um, you could go through trace, you know, trace down. And figure out, oh, I'm at 2.6 for my fine finest modulus of my sand, and my uh, my rock is at one inch. And then what you can do is you can trace over and realize that, oh, I'm right there at 0. 0.68, um, yeah, 0. 0.68 for my volume. Or you go over this table, and you can do in essence the same thing, where if you have a one inch rock and 2.6. You can go and trace it, and I think in the previous uh, example I looked at, I traced it and it was uh, 0.68. They actually got 0.69, so I might just might have accidentally moved a little off uh, whenever I did this. So, but yeah, so I, I you know you get the same answer in essence. You might be slightly like I did, where my alignment I didn't get a get a straight edge and and do it. Um, so, but you know. In essence, you get pretty much the same numbers. They're just providing the numbers in the table. So sometimes you may prefer just to use a table so you don't mess up like I did uh, on the figure and not draw an exact straight line. So step number six is 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 actually taking that that you know in the case of that 0.69 number, which was found, you know again found on the previous table, whatever that is. That's the volume of the percent of the coarse aggregate you're going to have for the for the for the concrete, and then you're going to multiply that by the dry rotted unit weight of the of the uh, coarse aggregate, and then you're going to have your 27, which is a conversion factor between feet and yards, cubic feet and cubic yards. Uh, so when you do all that, you can actually figure out uh, what your coarse aggregate is. And again, if you want to figure out what the volume is. You do 1,800 pounds divided by 2.63 divided by 62.4. 62.4 again is a conversion factor for cement to, uh, or sorry, from weight to volume. All right. So now our biggest step now we need to do is we need to figure out what our fine aggregate is. And literally all you do is you do 27 and then you minus the rest of these. So you can add all these up or you could just say 27 minus 10.97 minus 2.87 minus 4.01 minus 1.62 and that will uh and that's in essence you know what this equation appears all about and then you can like i told you before um, you can convert use your specific gravity and the unit weight of water to convert back and forth between uh um uh, the, the volume of your fine sand and your weight of your fine sand at SSD. So whenever you do all that, uh, that's actually where you uh, where you get your 7.53 at. So 27 minus all this up here um, is 7.53. All right, so the next step is you need to adjust for moisture of our aggregate. So uh, we assume for absorption, 
Again, they assume it's that SSD is, the, is actually what the absorption number is all about. So once you figure out what your absorption of, you know, which is kind of a property of that rock, um, the moisture does change. So you can go and you can, you know, if you have moisture probes that are on your stockpile of aggregate, um, that's one way of getting moisture. You can also go and put it in the oven. Um, either, either way, you determine your moisture right here. And then the 2.19 2 minus the 0.5, that is the amount of free water you have left over, so 1.69. So what am I saying? So if you have uh, uh, eight, 1,800 pounds of rock, so 1,830, I should say in this case, um, and you scoop it up and you weigh it, you're actually in your front-end loader where you scooped it up at, 1,800 pounds of stone is technically, uh, is, is 1,800 pounds of stone and 30 pounds of water um, that would make up the 1,830. So just because you got to realize that whenever, you know, that more, there is moisture in your aggregate. So it's not just pure stone. So there is water in there and you do have to, you do have to remove some of that water from your batch. So after you do your moisture corrections, uh, you need to do a trial batch. It may look great on paper, but you need to test it. You need to go out and look at the at it at a job, see how workable it is, stuff like that. Um, so don't forget to do that. So those are the nine steps um, the, uh, to go through an ACI 211 mixed design method. Um, there are a lot of stuff that I breezed over in here. So I apologize if, if uh, you know, you have lots of other questions. I do have a, a other extended videos that go over this in much greater detail to fill in some of the, the stuff that you may not know. So with that, I hope you have a great day.